I'm afraid that things can get a bit more complex, by which I mean you can have complex eigenvalues. And that gets a little interesting. Let's talk for a moment about complex numbers. Now, you all recall what complex numbers are. You've got the complex plane with the real axis and the imaginary axis, and points in the complex plane have a real and imaginary component. That's something like a Cartesian description. You can write a complex number in general as alpha plus i beta. Now, if you take that complex number, you can represent it not only in Cartesian coordinates, but in polar coordinates as well. There's something called the modulus of a complex number. It looks kind of like an absolute value symbol. And what that is, is the square root of alpha squared plus beta squared, where alpha and beta are the real imaginary components. This is the analog of the radial component in polar coordinates. The analog of the angular coordinate is sometimes given the old-fashioned name of argument. It's really just the arctan of beta over alpha. And instead of representing a complex number as alpha plus i beta, you can also represent it as r times e to the i theta, where we use Euler's formula to expand out that imaginary exponential. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. Hopefully these are things that you've seen before. We are going to use them eventually. Complex numbers are really, really useful. Even though we call them complex, they're really not that bad. Even though we call it imaginary, no, totally useful, totally for real. Now where we're going to be seeing complex numbers all over the place is in eigenvalues. Here are the facts. Eigenvalues can come in complex conjugate pairs. If you have complex eigenvalues, they have to be in conjugate pairs, by which I mean they're of the form alpha plus or minus i times beta for beta non-zero. Eigenvectors, correspondingly, also come in complex conjugate pairs. If you solve a minus lambda i v equals zero for these two values of lambda, alpha plus or minus i beta, what you'll find is that your eigenvectors are of the form u plus or minus i w for u and w real vectors. Now, this is really good news. It means that a lot of computations are easier than they would be otherwise. But, and I got to tell you here, most students really hate dealing with complex eigenvalues. Computing complex eigenvectors, you got all those eyes running around. It's a little bit ugly. I think looking at a couple examples will help make those points clear. Let's begin with a simple example. A great matrix, my favorite two by two matrix J, given by 0, 1, negative 1, 0. This is just a simple rotation matrix, the analog of the imaginary number I. What's the characteristic polynomial? I subtract off lambda times the identity, take the determinant, I get lambda squared plus one. Set that equal to zero, the eigenvalues are plus or minus i. To compute the eigenvectors, what do I do? I take j minus i times the identity. That gives me the operator negative i one, negative one, negative i. I need to find something in the kernel of that. Such a vector is necessarily complex. I think a perfectly good choice would be i1, because if I take the first column times i, add the second column, I get zero. You gotta be careful with your signs there, but that works out, that works out fine. Now, because everything comes in complex conjugate pairs, I know immediately, without doing any additional work, that the second eigenvector can be chosen to be the complex conjugate of the first. That is minus i, one. That's nice, that's simple. What's not so simple? Well, consider the matrix A given by one, three, negative three, zero. To compute the characteristic polynomial, what do I get? I have quantity one minus lambda times minus lambda and then minus negative nine. So plus nine equals zero. That's lambda squared minus lambda plus nine equals zero. The eigenvalues are, thanks to the quadratic formula, one plus or minus square root of one 
minus 4 times 9. That's 36 all over 2. Ah, these are complex eigenvalues. It looks like uh, 1 half plus or minus 1 half times i times the square root of 35. And then what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to you know, plug that into the a minus lambda i and then solve for v. And oh boy, that's not going to be so nice. This is what I mean when I say that complex eigenvalues, they can really be a pain. Hopefully, hopefully, you won't have to deal with too many examples that are like this one. But if you do, don't give up. Some examples can be a little bit unpleasant, but they are solvable and comprehensible. And what we're going to push towards in the future is really understanding what's going on. When you have complex eigenvalues or repeated eigenvalues or any kind of eigenvalues, because next we're going to work on how we use this to solve linear dynamical systems.